my name is Zach Kirster and welcome to another KMG video series where every week we take a look at a different fun, interesting aspect of music production with Ableton Live. And this week I want to talk a little bit about how to take a song that you did not write and how to warp it so you could either use it in a DJ set or you could use it for remixing. Um, it's really important to figure out the tempo of a song, warp it correctly, make sure it all sounds good um, before you start chopping it up and slicing it up because it's going to make your life a lot easier. So we're gonna take a look at this track. Uh, this is a track I just downloaded uh, from a group called Echol. Uh, they're super dope, making really cool music. Um, so I have no idea what tempo this song is going to be, but I need to figure out that tempo. And once I figure that out, I can start looping it, I can start chopping it and slicing it, and it's gonna be great. Uh, so to start off, one thing you'll notice is that uh, this track is not warped yet at all. Oftentimes what will happen when you drag a track into live, it will try to warp it for you and it'll add tons and tons of warp markers all over the place and usually it's not very good at it. So one of the things I've done is in my preferences, under the record warp launch tab, there is an option for auto warp long samples. I have that turned off and that way when I add in a longer sample, it doesn't try to warp it for me because like I said, usually it doesn't do a great job of it. So we're gonna start off with a, uh, a song like this, and if it d does do that for you, if you've already done that and it has a million warp markers in there, just turn warp off and then turn it back on again. And it should look something like this, where we have one warp marker at the beginning, um, and that's basically it. So from here, we need to start to figure out what tempo this is gonna be. And there's a couple step process that you can follow that will pretty accurately get you the right tempo, almost no matter what. So let's go ahead and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look for a downbeat. So a, a downbeat, uh, the easy way to do it is look for the first downbeat um, or look for the very first kick drum. It doesn't need to be the first downbeat, um, but that's usually the easiest way to do it. So we could do it right here. That looks like there's like a start of a phrase right there. Um, I'm gonna go over here and try it over here and see how this works. So let's zoom in and we'll listen to the song for a little bit. And what we're looking for is the very first kick drum of a phrase. So it's gonna be in here somewhere, and it looks actually like might be a little tricky to find it exactly. So it's actually that guy right there. I wasn't expecting to be that that one. Normally you look for those big transients for a big kick like that, but um, this is gonna be the start of this phrase right here. Let's listen to it one more time. Yeah, right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in pretty close, or as close as possible, and we're gonna right click, and we're gonna hit set 111 here. This is going to take the one of your grid. You can see this is in the middle of bar 49. Um, and it's going to make this bar one of our grid. So right click, hit set one one here. And you can see not only does it make bar one of our grid line up, but it also adds a warp marker for you. And it gets rid of that warp marker at the very beginning. So we still only have one warp marker. And this now indicates that the downbeat right here now lines up with the start of their grid, or the one of the grid lines up with the downbeat. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to right click again and we're gonna hit warp from here straight. So there are several different warp from here algorithms. Um, and what this does essentially is you see how there's all these little triangles. There's one there, there's one there, there's one there. Uh, those are transient markers. So those are indicating a sharp increase in volume. So we can see right here, it goes from very low volume to high volume. So it adds a little transient marker. So it's gonna analyze the space between your, your transient markers and it's going to guess the tempo of the song. And generally, if you're starting on a downbeat, it tends to be pretty accurate. So we're gonna hit Warp From Here Straight. Um, there are several other Warp From Here algorithms. Warp From Here Straight is the good one, so try that out. And you're gonna see the timing of the transients shift around a little bit. And you're also gonna notice your segment BPM, which right now says 120, um, should hopefully change to be the accurate tempo of the song. So we're gonna right click here, hit Warp From Here Straight. And it warped it, and it's saying it's at 118 BPM. So we can take a look here and you can see that transient lines up right there. That looks good to me. This transient lines up there, looks pretty good. That looks pretty good right there. So it looks like it did, did a pretty good job, but don't always trust that it's gonna do it right the first time. Um, always double check your work um, because sometimes even if it's off by a little tiny bit, that might really screw you up later down the road. So we'll take a listen to it and just look at the timing of the sounds uh, as well as when you're hearing them and it should sound pretty on time. Looks pretty good to me, sounds pretty good. 
Um, also, we can double check this with our metronome turned on. So if we turn on the metronome, should sound pretty good. In addition, I would also recommend zooming out and jumping over, I don't know, 30 bars, 40 bars later, just to make sure it doesn't drift. Um, some songs, if they're like, if it's not exactly right, it might sound good at the beginning and then kind of drift off time. So let's go over here to bar 41 and see how this sounds with the metronome. So even just looking at that looks pretty good. I'll jump right a little farther ahead. Looks pretty good, sounds pretty good to me. Um, so now we know that this song is at 118 BPM, which is great. Um, so this is perfect for DJing, so I can now DJ this with other songs in my DJ set. Also, like I mentioned, for remixing, it makes it really easy. So say I really like, I don't know, this phrase right here. Let's do two bars. Uh, so these two bars right here, I can just hit Command L, and this should loop pretty nicely if I've done this correctly. Great, so now I can find almost any section of the song. Let's try these two bars right here. Command L to loop it. That's four bars. Should loop pretty nicely. Um, so having never done this for the song before, I can pretty confidently go in and unless there's like a weird transition or a riser or something like that, I can loop almost anything that I want. and it should loop pretty nicely, which gives me lots of options for chopping things up, slicing them, shifting them around, moving around, um, having some fun with it. So what do you do in the situation where it's incorrect, when it doesn't correctly uh, warp it for you? I'm gonna show you real quick. So say for example, uh, let's move our start marker right here. Uh, say for example, it guessed the tempo was 120, three, for example, which happens sometimes. Sometimes it just guesses it wrong and, and there's not much you can do about that. What I recommend you do is listen to it and listen for the second clear downbeat, the second kind of like your reset of the loop or uh, the kick drum or something like that. And so we're gonna listen to it and we're gonna try to find that second downbeat. And so let's zoom in here and it looks like it's this guy right here. So this is, a, this is our next downbeat. So what I'm gonna do is without adding any warp markers, I'm just gonna click and drag this and move this to the two, like that. And you can see it's gonna move everything else around it. And now if I take a look at my second BPM, it says it's 117.68, which is close enough to at least allow me to like round it up or down to figure out that it's, oh, it's actually 118. So on the off chance, um, that it does guess the tempo wrong. Um, find the second downbeat, click and drag it to the two, and that should give you a better idea of what's going on, and then you can kind of figure it out from there. Uh, this tends to work really well, especially with electronic music. Most electronic music, especially dance music, is gonna be quantized, so the timing will be right on where uh, it should be. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily expect this method to work out really well for uh, you know, acoustic music, things that were recorded, especially pre-1980, because they didn't uh, um, play to a click track. Um, those are gonna like have a little give and take with the timing. It's gonna fluctuate a little bit, which makes it harder for the algorithm to figure out exactly what the tempo is. Um, however, for most electronic music, this will work really well, and it's just that couple step process. Number one, you turn warp on. Number two, you find a downbeat. Usually just look for the very first kick drum. Sometimes it'll be at bar one, sometimes it might be later on in the song. Um, it doesn't need to be the first downbeat, but as long as it's a really clear downbeat, it should work. Uh, you're gonna right click, hit set 111 here, uh, and then once you've done that, right click again and hit warp from here straight. And I, like I said, ideally that should get you pretty close to the right BPM or if not exactly there. Um, sometimes it might say like 117.96. If it's within a couple decimal points, you can just round it up or down to the closest whole number. Uh, and then after that, double check your work. You know, check ahead 30, 40 bars um, throughout the whole song, make sure there's no drift, make sure things don't change. Um, it's pretty rare that songs have tempo changes in the middle of them, but that does happen, so that's also something you should be watching out for. But once you've got it all worked, uh, like I said, now you can loop it anywhere. Uh, it makes it really easy for remixing. If you just wanted to slice out like an individual kick drum or sample, you could you know, take this guy and you can just get just that one hit and start rearranging it that way. 
or if you're gonna be DJing, you're gonna have to do this for every single song before you get on stage, uh, and that way you can play any songs together at any tempos that you want. Uh, so that's basically it. it it's you know, 98% foolproof uh, when it comes to warping songs, it, it, it only takes a couple minutes. Uh, so if you're prepping for a DJ set, uh, you can just crank out a whole bunch of songs real quick just by using this method and getting the timings just right. Um, keep in mind that even though your bar one of your grid is now in the middle of your song, you can still adjust your start marker wherever you want. So you don't have to like start in the middle of the song where the first where that downbeat is. Um, you can start here, you can start wherever you want, um, but the one of your grid will still be where that is. Um, and you'll be kind of going in negative areas over here. Uh, also keep in mind, if you already know the tempo of the song, if it, you know you wrote it or your friend wrote it and you can just be like, hey, what's the tempo of the song? Uh, you don't need to do the warp from here straight. You can set your one, 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 uh, and then just type in the tempo uh, to be whatever you want it to be. And that should work just fine as well. Um, I wouldn't necessarily just put the warp marker at the very beginning and then type in the tempo because some songs might have like a little, you know, fraction of a second little fade in before the actual rhythm starts. So still find that downbeat, that's gonna make your life easier. In addition, if you are gonna be warping specifically for DJing, I highly recommend using the complex warp mode. Um, as opposed, Definitely don't use beats, um, but complex to me is the one that has worked the best uh, in the most situations. And it will sound quite a bit better uh, for when you're DJing. Um, also just sounds pretty good for when you're remixing and slicing things and chopping things up or playing with timing. Uh, so yeah, that's basically it. Have some fun with it. Try it out for yourselves. Um, the first couple times you try it, it might take a few minutes, but once you get used to the basic workflow of figuring out the tempo, um, it becomes real simple and really easy, and you can do it to songs um, in you know 30 seconds. You got the tempo, you got it warped, and you're good to go. So thanks for watching. Keep an eye out for uh, more videos coming real soon from KMG. Bye.